it makes perfect sense to me that Jamie Lannister doesn't want anyone to find out that him and his sister are bumping uglies. He'll lie or cover up anyone that finds out, like, you know, pushing Bran out the window. Yeah, right. But for some reason, when Jamie's found or caught stabbing the Mad King in the back, he doesn't lie or do anything to cover it up. It's not like the Mad King is in any way an intimidating physical, you know, specimen that stabbing in the back was the only way to bring him down. Yeah, it's this weird, like, pride balance. Like, I, Jamie is a prideful dude. He's definitely prideful. He takes, he takes a lot of pride in what he does, and for good reason, right? Like, he's like an amazing sword fighter, arguably the second best in the entire franchise of Song of Ice and Fire. So I understand that kind of thing, but it's like... Does that really extend, or does that really make sense to extend to like, oh yeah, dude, you know how skilled I am? I stabbed an old man in the back. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't do shit. It's like, it doesn't really make sense. Plus, just knowing how bad that looks, like a kinslayer and a kingslayer in this universe, it doesn't matter if you had a righteous cause, those two titles are still going to weigh negatively on you no matter what you do. And like you said, understandably, incest does as well. Especially, you know, since the Seven is the main faith or whatever in Westeros. Right, uh -huh. But yeah, it's like, why, how, how is this a better, how is this a better thing? Do you think, is it somehow a combat feat for him? Okay, well, if you're a Kingslayer, like Robert, like if Robert was known as the Kingslayer, that's badass. You didn't take any vows, really necessarily, or as strict as you did as a King's Guardman or a Knight of the King's Guard. That's way higher charge being called a Kingslayer because, like, dude, you stabbed your guy in the back. The guy you, you swore everything away for to serve, you stabbed him in the back. So the nickname is only really detrimental if you just focus on him being on a king's guard. But it, I understand, okay? So he he stabs the king, the Mad King, in the back, you know, before he could like burn them all, whatever. And then the Lannister men yeah, come into whatever. the room, and they can clearly sh see that it's like there's blood on your blade. You can't really lie that somebody else killed him or that he just happened to like find a sword in the back of his <laughs> back of his shoulder <laughs> blades, right? Like you can't really lie about that. But he should have a better story than just. Or maybe this is the story. Do you ever think about that? Maybe the th the thing he didn't was really like, do it. You know, maybe like the Mad King was like, "Damn, I really thought I could have, uh, you know, maneuvered my way out of this." Looks like your dad's your dad's uh, betraying me in this situation. I really trusted him. That's this really sucks. And then Jamie goes, "You know what sucks more?" Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> but you know, do you think, well, you think like, that's what well, really happened? Oh, okay. No, so that's you're, what you're, really you're, happened. And then yeah, Jamie understood, lies and goes, oh. like, like, the, like, the mad, "Like the Mad King was remorseful, or yeah, remorseful, and he's about to change his ways." <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. I thought you were going to say something like the Mad King did it to himself. Like, oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. No. He's pretending to fall back and fall. Take out your you know sword, what? Jamie. Catch me. <laughs> he, maybe that's his. Well, maybe that's a gimmick where he uh, gets his back or his like body really close as possible to the Iron Throne. Like, whoa, maybe I'm going to do it. And like, sir, or, you know, your grace, God, please stop. stop doing that. It's not, that's not we, funny. You do this all the time. Oh, oh. And then it takes that hard right turn uh, right into Jamie's sword that time. Like, gotcha, bitch. I mean, your idea is actually kind of believable in a way. Like, but 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 again, why would he even, like you said, no, the Lannister men thing. Yeah, that's right. So he, there's no way he could lie about it. What if he just killed all the other Lannister men? Well, that's another way he could have done it. I think he fought off some Lannister men while he was in there in the Red Keep before he knew um, that the Mad King was going to go, you know, uh, Who's going to flip the board over? Basically, oh, you guys want to play this way in the game? Here, let me just flip this board well, over. Because what he really, what he really could have done, if I'm thinking about it, now, I'm thinking the most pragmatic, like intelligent way he could have handled that situation. He should have killed a Mad King as he did, uh, and then the other knights come in there to whatever confront him, and then he kills all of them and makes it look like they're the ones that killed the Mad King, and then he tells that story. You know what I mean? Like, oh, these guys killed the king, and then I avenged the the king by killing all of these guys like, right yeah I, I know i am the king's guard and i should have been able to protect him and save him i wasn't able to but at least i killed his killers you know what i mean it'd be a lot less disrespect that falls on his head i think than being a king slayer i like dude i don't even think what you said earlier is 100 percent true that the fact that it's just because he's a member of the king's guard that uh, being a king slayer is such a, a burden think about in the past i don't want to spoil dance of dragons or house of the dragon or anything but i'll just say there have been several times in the history of Westeros, where a king has been killed outside of battle, and even if the person who finds out about that agrees with the person who killed it, so let's say there's a campaign, let's just pretend like it's the Robert's Rebellion example, right? Right. Uh, let's say it's Robert and Ned Stark, and let's say Robert went and killed King Eris. Like, sure, that was their common goal, to usurp that king, but then Ned Stark would say, eh, you know what, I'm glad we got that guy out of there, but you're still a king slayer, so you're still going to die, because that's the most dishonorable thing you can do in the Seven Kingdoms. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't know. How, and he has to be aware of that history. 
Yeah, and that's very like yeah you're saying there. It reminds me of an well, incident that occurs. About. Yeah, in House of the Dragon. Well, well, well I, yeah, again, yeah, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but uh, there is something that occurs like that um, within the history of Westeros, and, and yeah, no I, one I, counters it. It seems like common practice. Right. Um, so I, I understand that, but still, I'm confused why Jamie doesn't have a better lie because there is a possibility, right? Possibility one, this is the lie. Actually, possibility one is what he said is the truth that he. This all occurred the way he he told it, right? That uh, the Mad King was going to burn them all, and then I actually had to stab him, and boo-hoo, I couldn't really lie about it. I just had to fess up yeah, to yeah. it. But for some reason, he decided he wanted to sit on the Iron Throne and wait for people to come in, like, see them. Like, come on, dude. It, not not a good look. But second, uh, the second option is that's not how it occurred. The Mad King was not all that mad to begin with. He was just kind of, like, maybe misunderstood or, like, highly autistic. And then he stabbed <laughs> him in the back to, like, show his dad, like, yeah. I'm still good, daddy. And this is the lie, so that way he looks like he can keep his honor. But clearly, everyone saw right through it and don't Listen, like it. man, I wouldn't even blame him if that was the case because, dude, he treated Tywin like shit, Eris did. And, like, looking down, I mean, he made you a Kingsguard just to kind of basically take you out of the equation. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? As Jamie Lannister, just to, as a, to piss on Tywin. So, I, dude, I get it. Like, from Jamie's perspective, I get why you want this bastard dead, man. He's old, he's a piece of shit. He's probably weak. He's got no muscle tone. He's seriously just a beta. He won't even leave the red keeps. He's scared everybody's going to kill him. It's like, come on. <laughs> you know how many kings went on little, uh, what do you call them, uh, campaigns or whatever around the Seven Kingdoms and they never got right. killed? He's mm -hmm. being a little bitch. And so, I get it. I get why you'd want this guy dead, but I don't think that's the case just because of. Unless Jamie's a really good actor, man. He's given his own explanation as to why he did it, the burn them all thing. It's pretty convincing. And I guess yeah. he is kind of a sociopath in a way Jamie is. And he'll basically lie and do anything to protect his relationship with Cersei. So I don't know. Maybe, you know, I, I'm growing on this theory of yours, man. I think it might be a lie. I think he may have just slaughtered this dude. But again, then, why wouldn't he just frame all those other knights that came in and found him? Caught him with his pants down white-handed. Or you know what he could have done because he was af afraid that the Mad King was going to keep ordering people to, uh, you know, this pyromancer to like burn them all and you know let out the what was it called the the flame what's it called the wildfire fire? yeah wildfire. they're going to let out the wildfire uh, that maybe Jamie should have said every time a pyromancer came in every time a pyromancer comes in gets orders from you know whatever the throne room the Iron Throne from the king and then uh, the pyromancer is about to leave Jamie's like hey can I speak to you for a second and then. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha, bitch. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> oh. Every time someone comes in, he's like, ah, oh. the Mad King's just sitting there like, hmm, the, the King's Landing isn't really on fire yet. I wonder what's going on. I'll get you another pyromancer, my lord. Uh, Jane, I'll see I'll see what's going on here, man. This is <laughs> this is unacceptable. Yells down the hall to somebody, but no one's really there. <laughs> there there's a huge pile of dead bodies on the other side of the door. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah, you, you, come down here. What, what do you mean? Okay, I'll come over there. <laughs> Goes and kills another one. I, I understand why Jamie's like the built-up tension, like you said, that uh, the Mad King kept him away from his father. Even though the whole time Jamie, the only reason why he takes the King's Guard role is first off, he's like a boy. Like who doesn't want to be part of the King's Guard? It sounds badass as a, as yeah. a little boy. But then he only wants to do it because he's a simp for his sister. Which I mean, <sighs> you know, you got to really like question yourself. Like you're, I, I'm a big Lannister boy, but uh, Jamie, knowing that the the reason why he wants to become part of the King's Guard is just to get closer to his sister. It's like, oh come on, dude. Like, yeah, all your thought processes have to come into question at this point. Oh, it's pretty cringe, and that's the thing too. Like, I guess it, it kind of supports both of these theories, right? That he's willing to break his vows. Cause, wait, hold on. So, I know there's a slight differences between the Night's Watch and the King's Guard. I, I think one of them's sworn to celibacy. Straight up, and then one of them sworn yeah. to take no wives. Correct. I forget which one is which. Is it the night, the, the Night's Watch? What? I was trying to find an official like oath of the King's yeah, like Guard. The creeds or whatever. People should comment down below if there's official King's Guard oath because we'd like to see what that uh, what that is. Because I, everything I've seen has just been kind of excerpts of what uh, uh, Barristan has said within the book, and right. I don't think well, it, yeah, I don't it's it, official anything. I was gonna say, tell me if I'm wrong too in the comments, because yeah, I, I swear to God though, like at least the impression I got from either the books or the TV show is that the Night's Watch. I think this is how it is. The Night's Watch. They can like go and have sex. Like they can go find a some prostitute in a brothel if they want to, and they can have sex with that prostitute. But they just can't take a wife. But I think the King's Guard. I think they're straight up celibate. Because then why would it be an issue if Kristen Cole has sex with Rhaenyra, right, in season one of House of the Dragon? Well, it's mostly so, like I, any person having sex with Rhaenyra out of wedlock. I think is the is the issue. Just because well, it's a yeah. 
it's a female, whatever. But True. Uh, and plus, if you're pressured, if you're having sex with somebody with that many chromosomes, you know, there's going to be an inherent guilt for the rest of your life. And I wouldn't want to <laughs> put up with that if I was Chris Nicole, man. Yeah. Well, also, we have to take into consideration that even though you're allowed to, you know, maybe have sex with whichever, you know, gender you want to at those brothels, right? The pullout game of people in Westeros is so bad that having sex almost automatically leads to. Uh, childbirth, right? Like I, I, the pull-out game is horrendous. Do what they if, not know if, that's how it, it, it occurs? There's no, like, okay. I have a theory. I have a theory. But, I think it's just the first men. They're so animalistic and barbaric that they were—they're actually a lot closer to animals than real-life humans. True. So I think they're kind of like horses or dogs, where they're having sex and the entire time they're ejaculating, like kind of providing their own lubricant. I'm not even sure. Maybe the women don't provide the lubricant in this universe. It's the men, and they're constantly just ejaculating nonstop. It's like a—it's—they're preying constantly. Yeah, I become, we haven't become, seen anything become. on screen like official like in detail like that. So I think our head cannon probably should be closer to that than just a regular genitalia of uh, humans in our universe. They probably look like horses too. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, what's um, what's that dude's name? Who, Podrick, right? Podrick from Game of Thrones. Like they make jokes yeah. about how big his dick is, but now that I'm thinking about it, if everybody's horse cocked in Westeros, imagine what this guy's got, dude. Imagine it. Uh, well, I th maybe it's like, they say the same thing with Tyrion that he's got a pretty large member down just there. Just proportionate. And, come on, mushroom. Yeah, too. that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, just come on, guys. You, you're you're you got an advantage on us. Like everything else is out of proportion. So this thing that is in proportion, four inch looks... warrior like the rest of us. Come on, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Well, four inches, dude, on a good day. Yeah. When I've done my four gymnast stretches soft. like somebody else does here. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we know that Jamie's willing to break his oath in order to sleep with his sister while being a member of the Kingsguard, and I think they're supposed to be celibate. So, yeah, I guess I was going to say that that lends credence to one theory or another, but no, really, that lends credence to both. Because either way, he's killing the king, right? And that's a brick of his oath. So right, and Jamie never like really keeps his oaths, right? Like he swears his oath to that, and it's only convenient for him to uh, keep his oath because what was the um, oh the dude the awesome line by Ned Stark in uh, season one of Game of Thrones? Oh, right? during like, that standoff, you in the throne yeah. Room? Oh, dude, you, you served him well while serving was safe. It's like oh, dude, that. <laughs> this entire interaction is just unbelievably good. It's just one liner, one liner, one liner. I don't know what happened to that writing, dude. God tier. I, yeah, it's really good. Um, but the whole that whole Ned like looking down on Jamie is a big part of this whole thing too, because Ned is supposed to be like the avatar of, hey, I am the moral, um, the morally justified uh, observer and judge in the situation of you. When I came into the throne room too, I saw you did this and I'm like, you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I am the honorable one. I get but, but, but in that interaction that we said in that season one, you know, Ned was like, you just watched my brother and um, my brother and father die before the mad King. But like Ned, you're getting mad at Jamie for stabbing the, 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 the like whatever the, uh, the mad King in the back. But you sh think he should have done something better or did something <laughs> know, similar to that it, yeah, when your brother much. and father were in risk? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, no, this just shows that Ned's just fuck. Ned is jealous as hell of Jamie's swordsmanship, and there's no right that Jamie could do. And you know what? Jamie's handling it pretty well, I think. He knows what Ned's deal is. He puts up with his shit probably every time he sees him. Like he, he, There's nothing he can do right, so he's just kind of taking this hyper-confident approach, and you know what? The dam finally burst one day, and he attacked him in the middle of King's Landing Street, and I don't even blame him, dude. Ned would have pissed me off, man. It's like, hey, you watched my father and brother get burned? It's like, well, yeah, that's why I, I killed the king. I didn't want him to do it anymore. It's like, oh, so you killed the king, do you? It's like, well, what are you supposed to do? I know. He watched two people, high lords, who he had no allegiance to, die in front of him. And yeah, it's probably really sad. But then all of a sudden, the Mad King thinks he's going to, or, you know, gives out orders that he wants to blow up most of King's Landing. And Ned's like, oh, that's where you draw the line? I'm like, that's a pretty good place to draw a line. You know, <laughs> thousands of lives versus just two high lords who right. are coming down to complain about their daughter, who I think we're going to do a video on, you know, why Lana, uh, Leana, Leana. Why, Le why Leana Stark is like deranged an idiot and why we should all hate her and a lot of people uh hate Rhaegar for a lot of it but uh no she is uh she is the worst and she's the whole reason why this whole thing was caused yeah but she's also you know the reason or at least a catalyst as to how our big boy big old Robert became king and that whole conquest is just so fucking cool dude so I don't know there's good and there's bad but I we do hate Liana. then let us know in the comments if you like or hate Liana. and if you like Liana, please unsubscribe from the channel but 
Yeah, exactly. Well, okay. So I also want to hear in the comments, you know, we're asking you to put a lot in the comments and you should do for every time we say it. Uh, just side note here. Everybody but, watching this, please make five what, comments. <laughs> what's a better lie that Jamie could have told to, to actually get off? Because like I said, there could have been a possibility where this was the lie, the wildfire thing. It's a pretty good lie. And he's convinced himself enough that he can say in a convincing way. But is there a better lie he could have said to uh, everybody within Westeros. Yeah, like, okay, the lies we mentioned are pretty believable, and I still think that my my preferred one would be that he just kills all of the men that found him and then say that those men were the ones that killed the king and that he killed those men to avenge the king. I like that one the best because I think it's the most feasible. Is there any way, is there any shred of a chance Jamie could have pulled off a lie when those men came in and he said, like, I, I don't know what happened to him. Like, somebody else somebody else did it. I don't know. Is there any way he could get away with that? Like, somebody took my sword, I, they stabbed him, and then they left. It was nettles. Like, what, you know, is there I'm any way? I'm pulling it out of him because it was stuck. Someone else stabbed him. Someone did this. He fell on He fell on my sword. We were, ho we were horse playing a little bit too hard. Like, is there any way that can happen? Yeah, I know. Because I'm thinking to myself, if you could somehow even make people, con like, let's pretend. People were people 100% believed you that you guys were just horse playing with the sword while there's a sack of King's Landing, right? Isn't that more embarrassing? Like, oh yeah, you were just playing with the king and you had your sword and you guys were just like, hee hee hee, horse playing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody knows how, how crazy the Mad that's, King is, that's... right? It's like, I, we do this all the time. It really helps with his stress. It helps him cope. It's the only way I was able to get him out of King's Landing to go to the, that big council thing at Heron Hall. Tr trust me, this is the way it has to be, and it just got a little away from us this time. It just got a little away from us. You know, we had a little bit too much to drink. The swords came out. I don't know if that's believable. What was Rhaegar doing at this time? Was I think he's dead how, at this how, time, but he, he know, already he, died by the time he's at the, the Tower of Joy. Well, no, actually, no, he's at the the Triton, right? He's probably at the Triton. Oh yeah, getting uh, his getting his chest bashed in by Robert. Okay, I wasn't sure of that because yeah. I was because I was going to say you know during this time there was so much tension between Robert and Rhaegar, or not Robert and Rhaegar. Uh, the Mad King, Eris, and Rhaegar, right? Like, Rhaeg mm -hmm. Rhaegar probably actually did want to overthrow his father, and his father was well aware of that, probably t uh, exaggerating the extent to which Rhaegar wanted to do that, but you know what I'm saying. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, and everybody else, by the way, in King's Landing knew that too. So I was going to say, if there's some possible way, he could have said, like, yeah, Rhaegar did this, or like, uh, one well, of Rhaegar's me. men... Yeah, yeah, Rhaegar told me he did this, and then he... <laughs> he and Rhaegar's then he, dead. And then he, and then he, he went died, straight like, to the Trident. <laughs> He died like a fortnight ago. You're like, oh, damn, what do I say now? <laughs> well, I forgot. I forgot until today. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that that's a decent one. I think if you can bring anything into the fingernail aspect of the Mad King, I think everyone's on board with you. You're like, dude, I was just trying to cut his fingernails. I had enough. Look at them. They're fucking disgusting. Yeah, you They're need Valyrian steel knees. to hack at these things, man. And you know what? they? I remember in the books, too, they, they described how thick these fingernails were. They weren't just long. They were thick. So I think, yeah, that's not bad either. You got to saw him, right? You got to do that sawing motion. And let's say Eris's hand. No, because it was behind his back. How do you stab someone in the back where you're clipping their nails, man? <laughs> I don't know. He's like, I, may, okay, maybe he was like, here, here's a better angle at it. And then uh, the Mad King puts his hands behind his back. And then he was just going to slice this. He's like, I can't look at, because he was always afraid of blades near him, right? That's the only reason why he lets his beard grow out and his fingernails go. Um grow long is because he's afraid yeah. anything is going to stop even though he sits on the iron throne and constantly cuts him all the time right well, i used to um, get you so he, yeah as long as it's out of sight right the blade's yeah, he, out of sight yeah he's like here i'm gonna put my hands behind my back you do it and he goes oh, oh. <laughs> these, these <laughs> fingernails are <laughs> thick i see i can't even imagine like i was i was gonna say what is he like typing on his laptop with one hand and his other hands behind <laughs> his back just to get it out of the way it's like yeah what reason could there possibly be? all right listen i don't mind that so much at some point even a crazy ass king has got to get annoyed with his long ass fingernails. This might be believable, but you know what you'd have to do. See, okay, this is the part two. Jamie is not stupid, and this is why this topic is kind of so infuriating. Because if he was planning on killing the king, even if it was a thought in his mind, let's say like a week prior, right? Right. He'd be thinking like, okay, I might have to do this at some point. I should start planting the seeds of when I would have to do this. So maybe this fingernail thing. I like this idea actually in the presence of the rest of the Kingsguard or at court or something like that, maybe he could bring up to the king and pretend like he's saying it quietly, but enough so that everybody would hear. Like, are we still on to cut your fingernails soon? Or so, you know, something like that. <laughs> Why like, is he little Nicky? Like, hey, get in the flask. <laughs> it's like, no. like, remember, sir, we have to cut your fingernails soon. And then the king would be like, well, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Jamie just smiles and nods. 
I think if he doesn't, if he gets a decent <laughs> setup to this, it becomes believable. Yeah, or he just like says it to the Mad King. Mad King, or he kind of mumbles it, but everyone else around him hears uh, that what Jamie said, and the Mad King's like, "What?" And then Jamie just gives a nod of like, "Yes, yes, very like yes, we're on the same page." You know, it's like no, no one. <laughs> a little affirmative nod. All the other Kings um, guard, they're kind of looking back too, but they like, "Okay, what the hell okay. is going on?" Yeah, I understand. That. Um. Well, what's the plan after we sack King's Landing and for some reason Tywin thinks it's okay, let's the mountain grape the Martell yeah. children, the Targaryen Martell children, and the wife there, right? What was the plan for Ares? Because someone had to take care of him. Like someone was going to have to kill him or, you know, lock him away. Were they? Was it the plan? Like, hey, we're going to sack King's Landing and then just lock Ares away somewhere? Or is he going to be killed the whole time? But it was going to be by like the mountain or some other underling that doesn't have as much honor on their name. Well, it's hard to say because, again, like we were talking about earlier, this whole Kingslayer thing, the, the dishonoring part of it, as far as I'm aware, and at least in the history of all these, of all the stories we know, you only get the dishonored version of the Kingslayer title or the Kingslayer titer, title in general if you kill him in like a cheap way like this, right? Like uh, it's by poison or it's by stabbing him secretly or it's like an assassination kind of thing. Uh -huh. If you were to capture this dude and basically take him to trial and then execute him formally... That's not going to look bad on anybody. You might have some people that still support the Targaryens uh, that are a little bit disconnected from the conflict, and they might be pissed, but there's not going to be this mass disrespect like you get now. And it's the same on combat, too. So maybe they were hoping that Eris would take up arms or something. Because if he dies in combat, he dies in combat. You're not really a Kingslayer anymore, at least not in the same way. Right. So I don't know. I think both those options are good. This might be the, just the worst way it could have been done. Like I don't even know why Jamie felt the need to do it in this way. Is Aerys Targaryen an inti intimidating man somehow? No, he's not. He's like an old, weak piece of shit with fingernails as long as you know the throne room is. So I, I don't understand why right. he even took this way out to begin with. He should have just waited. Well, that's the whole thing with him and uh, that again that interaction. We keep talking about the Ned and Jamie one, where Ned or Jamie says to Ned would have been more honorable if I stand if I stabbed him in the belly and not the back and it's like uh I don't I, well first of all I don't know why you didn't stab him in the belly it's so much easier it's just like look at him huh. I don't know if it's that much harder to do in the back versus the stomach you know or easier I guess well it, you maybe don't have to deal with the guy trying to dodge you that's like the only thing but again it's not really a threat so this is like a kill of pure convenience to me and that's why yeah that's why it's so weird it's a kill of pure convenience and I don't understand why a man of Jamie's like pride and intelligence, frankly, too, would take this route. It's it's just odd. I'm never gonna understand it. The fact he's so secretive with Cersei, the fact he's so open with this king slaying thing, both are disrespectful. People are gonna hate you for both of these things. So it's like, dude, now that you got the Kingslayer thing out, why don't you just make it loud and proud that you're fucking Cersei? Like, who cares? What's even gonna happen? I guess okay, by the time the Joffrey thing comes up, that's bad. But before that, yeah, who cares? Right. The the thing Jamie should have said this whole time to every single person that came across uh, and asked him this was, uh, you just had to be in, you just had to been there, dude. You just had to been there. You don't understand. Like, you weren't there. You don't know. Like, you just had to been there. Yeah, or somebody comes by and asks him, so, oh, Kingslayer. So why'd you kill the king? Jamie just says, oh, well, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, in case kills him, too. Yeah, just, why not? Take him all the pound school, dude. I'll tell you why I killed the king. Just like that. That's how I did it. Yeah, actually, come over here. I gotta. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> I gotta show you something on the tip of my sword. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and smash that like button. Or not. We don't care. <laughs>